Hey, welcome to Gabe's Cave. I'm Darren, and this is my associate, Gabe. This is Gabe. Did, did, did y'all know that we're brothers? Hard to, hard to believe without all that facial hair he has. He doesn't have. I know. Anyways, uh, so before we get started today, I want to thank our sponsor. That's RPG, RPGHiring.com. Make sure you check them out. They're building people, changing lives. If you're looking for a new career, I would hit them up. Absolutely. So, uh, it's good to be back on the show. I've been off for a little while, and I will probably be off for the next one. I don't know. Uh, between uh, real work and the show and then the shop and life, yeah. so only, o- only some of us can be here, and then the rest of us have to be doing the other things. That you keep don't this, have a choice anymore. You're running the keep show Keep this now. thing running. No, I don't know about all that, Chief. <laughs> uh, we do have a super <laughs> special thing. It's special to me, not him. It's super special I to me. I see this just as much as you. Uh, we have a statue build today. And this is uh, my first statue. I was trying to get you to get this these This is statues. the Mythos Darth Maul, and I'll go ahead and grab it. But it is super special to me because... I tried to get him to do the Mythos stuff, and he was like... Oh, well, oh, I'm, not really oh, the biggest, I'm not really the biggest of statue builds, but, you know, seeing as... Uh, I got it for Christmas. I, well, I can't say no. Yeah, this was his Merry Chrysler present. Darth Maul Mythos statue. This one is not new in the box. Uh, this one is special. This one actually came from a uh, good, a friend, good of friend of ours. That is Chris Hayes over at Pastime Comics. Is where this. I'll grab the bottom. This is where this uh, statue came from. It was sitting there for a while in his showcase. We've seen. It. We have seen it. I have laid eyes on this one before it has come to me. However, there is something a little special about this one. You can grab that for me. I really, I think that's going to sound really good on their audio. Oh yeah. When they're watching this. Oh yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> so, I'm going to lay this down actually. But you can see the box here. Really cool. It's the Mythos Mall. He should have a couple heads with him. Some different stuff. Another view of it. I don't know that you need that view of it. it doesn't really matter. Well, I'm excited because we haven't actually gotten to take this out yet, and I, like I said, I did get it for Christmas, but I don't have anywhere to put it at my house, so it's going to replace one of these guys here behind us. We'll actually or have actually it might sit over there. No, it's, it's it's going back here. Is it? Yeah, it's going back here. We're going to get rid of one of your superheroes for a Star Wars. Uh, Little diversity here, buddy. It is. We do have diversity. We have. Uh, I think we're getting rid of. Depends on how big he is. If he's bigger than Galactus, Galactus is gone. You can't do that. Everybody loves Galactus. Watch me. I can and I will. Yeah, just... Well, just... I don't know. Give it... We've been doing some artist interviews all day today. And... um, All I can say is Series 3 cards are coming in hot. I'm sure if you guys follow us or follow... Uh, any of our artists on socials, you've seen them because we do like them to promote. It's not any secret here, but, you know, we're busting them back out of the box and looking at them again when we do the interviews with them. And all I can say... Because we got some of these in a while back. Some of them. Some of them are for reason. Yeah. But all I can say is some of these artists, not some, all, but some of these are packing some heat this year. Um, Specifically... Uh, one of them, uh, I'm going to say Seth, Seth Groves had a Paul Atreides, uh, Moadib, really, really inspired me and hit different. I'm glad I didn't open this up wrong. Ooh, that would have been bad. So. What did you almost drop? Uh, his noggin. Well, one of them. One of his noggin, the good one. Oh, what? So, yeah, okay, all right, well, I'm stepping on something here. The good one. All right. Don't you want it to be Mythos? So. What makes this special, you ask? Well, we have, you know, Darth Maul mythos here. But if you follow us and you've seen anything on our socials and whatnot, you've seen who likes to come to Pastime Comics. And this he's been there several times. But I want to say one of the last times he was there, he actually got to sign the bottom of said statue. And if you do this... Sith rule. Chris... 
if you can do the overhead, you may see this here. Uh, that is um, Ray Park. Yeah, Ray Park. I don't know why my mind just went blank. My goodness, I love Ray Park. It's the guy Anyways, who took my phone, you know? Is this backwards? Is that right? The um, other way? Yeah. Okay, it's backwards for us. Anyways, so we got Ray Park actually signed this right here. And he, he goes there regularly, so it's not like, oh, is that really authenticated? It is. Uh, Sith rule, and this is number 1152 out of 4500, but it's probably one of the only ones that is signed by Ray Park, which is really cool. We have ourselves on the base here, you what looks like on the base. Palpatine's face. How dare yeah, you set that down. down on his signature? <laughs> So, I'm just saying, Chris, Hayes, over at Pastime, thank you for letting us snag that. That's really, really cool. So, we start off here with what I believe is the body goes first. I don't really know. You know, these guys are always different. That's sick. I like his robo legs, man. Mm -hmm. They're really cool. He goes right there just like that. Backwards? Surely. Surely not. That, that's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's like jumping off and it's like exploding as he jumps off. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah. Oh, it's a waist cloak. Cool. This side. Mm hmm. Oh, back, back here. Sure. Yep. Nifty. Neat. All right, this one was very well taken care of. Um, nothing is broken. Ever saw it? No. Never mind. Um, well, I believe that is his right hand. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, Gabe. No, you gotta do him like you do <laughs> electro. Just the. He's got the. I do believe hands that is his right hand. Gabe does not know his left from right. It's the first time. This lightsaber is very, very cool. Very cool. Cool, bro. Yeah, it's his half and half lightsaber. So, um, I don't know if you can see this right here. So, he's got his half and half from what was, uh, I believe, Rebels. Rebels. Yeah, so he's got Which his. Which is not the. It's not the exact one, but yes. Now he's got his OG off. transmitter here, and then he's got what his looks like his Rebels transmitter. Oh, yeah. Neat. <clears throat> this is the head you like better? I like the classic Maul head versus the Psychopath Maul head. As far as it goes for Mythos, I like the Psycho. I mean, crazy, like, locked up Maul where... He was um, insane, insane like whatever. You know, I don't know. I like the, uh, I like the short, the short horn mall. Yeah, I don't know, but they always promote it as this one. Let's see. Yeah, I like that. Nah, I don't do it for me. It looks like he's got a spider on his head. That looks that's, like Darth Maul. That's why you don't like it. That makes sense. So, build for these guys are fairly short most of the time. If you have ever built one, uh, mainly if you've ever built one, you know that they're not really take a lot of time. Some of them do, some of them don't, but yeah. But my goodness, now that he's together, let's give it a good look over after I get this off the table. So yeah, got ourselves a really sick Mythos Mall with Ray Park's signature on the bottom. I don't think it really is cool in this. Gabe, this is the coolest one we have now. That's debatable, but yeah. Do you have a uh, signature on any of yours? No, but okay, I, doesn't I like doesn't matter. I like you lose. More. You lose. I like the Bane Batman more. Super sick. Fight me. Oh, I will. Super Arms sick. And, and uh, it's really cool. I hope you can see it. You got a statue here of Palpatine, but he's like got his foot on it, and the rocks are like exploding, exploding out. out where he's like, like force jumping off of it. And it's like literally shattering, yeah, the shattering the statue in and blowing up. And there's like red lines here and there. I guess like where it's like so much power. I don't know. It's through the whole statue. Yeah. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah, really it's cool. It's through the original look on the robes too. 
That's not really just the cool. cracks. Where he's like blowing the statue up, leaping off of it after somebody. Yep. But I really, I think Maul's my favorite uh, Sith, besides like Revan, some KOTR stuff. I really like the, the Old Republic stuff, but you know, canon wise, I think he's definitely my favorite, my favorite Sith. Mm hmm. You know, mm -hmm. followed by like. Which this isn't canon. So this isn't the canon version. Oh, uh, but, but Maul is canon. Yes, Maul but this is isn't canon. the version of. Yeah, Maul but it doesn't. But, but Maul is canon. Yeah. I put his head on it, now he's canon. Yeah. Actually, I think the other head was canon too, because he was in Rebels. I mean, uh, Clone Wars, like the very first when you first yeah. meet him in the trash box. Although that wasn't supposed to be the version uh, that this was based on. Like, no, this because he had spider legs. Yeah, this is a bunch of different mixed versions of him to where it's like uh, Mythos wasn't, wasn't that like. George Lucas's plans for it. Uh, I don't know. 100%. I think that's what that was. Yeah, I know. I'm saying because I don't the know entire what's uh, right. the entire sequel trilogy was supposed to be based off of uh, Crimson Dawn and Maul and stuff. Yeah, that's right. Which that's what all of Mythos was. Uh, all of the stuff that had to do with it, like the Tatooine uh, Ben Kenobi, where he's like the scavenger. Did you say the sequel trilogy? Yeah. The sequel trilogy originally was actually supposed to be off of um, Leia. No, their kid, Luke and Luke's kids. That's what it and was. Leia that's and what Han's the comics kids. were. Well, that's what the books were. But George had planned for that. Lucas planned for that. We had a whole movie written up for that. Mm -hmm. The comic line. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the book line, fighting people from outside the galaxy who. Have... A big part of what they were going to fight was Crimson Dawn, I think. From what I not I've... in the books. I thought it was. Mm -mm. No, it was a, mm -hmm. it was a group of individuals from outside the galaxy, that. Um, Force users could not sense them, so they would just show up and start destroying planets, and they destroy half the galaxy and the Senate and everything. And then finally, they stop them. I don't remember what they're called. They're like weird alien things. They speak in like clicks and. Well, I'm just dumb. Weird uh -huh. thing. Yeah, it was like a strange. It was strange for Star Wars. It felt I know more there, like there was something that it was based off of Crimson Dawn that Lucas had planned. Maybe, but um, somewhere either in but the some original, kind of the original yeah. part of it was. Was that it? Was like it felt real Star Trekky, not mm -hmm. not really Star Wars, but the Crimson Dawn thing was a lot better. Yeah. But um, statue is super sick. It's definitely my favorite because maybe maybe I'm, I'm a little uh, a little biased because it's mine. But the detail is really good. His face the is legs. good. The legs. The, the legs are fantastic. I've always liked Maul's robo actual robo legs and not his grievous legs or his spider legs. Yeah. Um, like the humanoid legs. You're right. The cape is really cool. I think the base is fantastic with the blowing up like that. I love the, I love that he still has the the, the lightsaber, the double-ended lightsaber. What are you doing? The double-ended lightsaber, um, but it's it you know half of it is his Phantom Menace lightsaber, and the other half is his new, mm -hmm. uh, his new saber where he's um, gotten a little better at it. Uh, they Just did include, they did include his earring in his ear. That's you funny. Did. Yeah, you see it. I don't know. They included his earring in his ear. So Ray Park has an actual earring right here, and they, George Lucas thought it was cool, so they just uh, they painted left it, it black. Well, I don't know if they painted it black or not, but they left it in the original. So huh, they did include it in his ear too, so that's kind of cool. Is that in the Clone Wars or anything? Mm, he's got it in all of them. It's just like a little, it's like a little dot in his ear. You huh. never notice it, but yeah, it is. All right then. So super super duper cool. Um, I hope everybody enjoys this one, and if you can still get it, I would say get it if you really like Star Wars. I wanted to get it, but I just didn't know if I would if I would put it anywhere. But now that we've got the cave and I can put it behind us here, I'm now glad that you can have replace it. one of mine. Right, right, in right. In my right. cave, my office is only so big at home, so I, I try to keep that limited to <laughs> sideshow. Yeah. Um, this is. I actually may end up getting the Mythos you mean, Vader you mean statue. Put it to uh, Hot Toys. Not Sideshow. Hot well, I mean, Sideshow is the exclusive retailer for Hot Toys, so yes, I say Sideshow. Isn't this is this Sideshow? Who did this one? This is Sideshow. Okay. Hot Toys. Yeah. One six scale posable That's figures. That's what I was trying to say. This is Sideshow. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is a Sideshow piece. <laughs> but, yeah, so I, I try to, what little office space I have, I'm, which I'm going to have to move into a different room, which even has less office space now, too. Um, okay, good. Yeah, and I'm getting finessed. But, um... <laughs> Uh, I have even less room, so I'm going to try to stick to just the hot toys. Uh, but I am probably going to buy the Mythos Vader, and we'll just put it up here, too, and we'll remove someone else. Why don't you just take the double shelf, move the, the board out, and put statues there? I don't want to. Because you want to take mine? Because I want it to be behind us when we film. Fair enough. Because I don't want to. Anyways. You don't even watch them. This guy's almost like six skill, anyways. 
Yeah, he is. He's, he's not quite f quarter scale, is he? No, he is. No, 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 he is. Because Maul's not a very big guy. Okay. Maul isn't. Maybe the not. Dathomirians aren't very big. Maybe not. They're All right, well, people. Uh, let's go on to the other parts of the show where, you know, we... I just infuse with Sith magic. We give stuff away, and then we'll do an artist interview. How about that? All righty, Gabe, why are you drinking water right now while we're trying to film? Thirsty. I'm sure they heard every bit of that gulp you just <laughs> took out of that water. Uh, anyways, now is the time where we give some stuff away, and we're giving away James Dixon's cards. They are super duper spectacular, and I don't have them in my hand right now. You welcome do for I? the drinking ASMR. No, I don't. Um, we're gonna give those away right now. We're gonna run the giveaway. Gabe, find us a winner. My goodness. You won. All 10 of you. And the loot box winner. All 11 of you. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. I hope you love them as much as I do because, man, I'm telling you right now, I want to take all these cards home with me. And I can't. I have to be Unless nobody good. Won. I have to be a good boy and not steal the cards from the viewers because that would be wrong. Unless for some reason nobody won and nobody entered our giveaways anymore. Right. But That's then not we wouldn't happen. have a show. Yeah. We wouldn't have a show. And we hope there's a thousand people that enter them because that only means that we're going to give away more stuff to y'all. Because as we get bigger, the giveaways probably will get bigger too. I don't know why they wouldn't. So. Absolutely. With all of that being said, congratulations to the winners, all 10 of you. We're going to go on now to this week's artist interview. And I surely, surely hope you enjoy it. Um, that will be Seth Groves, our good friend. Our comrade, our $4 buddy. Um, these are his cards here. They're really awesome. We actually did the interviews earlier today, I'm sure as you can our see. What? with Don't worry about it. Um, I'm sure you can see. Because I'm wearing the same outfit as I was earlier. Uh, Paul Atreides, Moadib here. If you guys uh, oh, selected... I remember which one was my Listen, favorite. if you win this card... Hear me out right now. If you win this card... I'll trade you. If you win... Gabe has no money. I'll, he has no I can power trade. Here. I can trade other art cards I have. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot Old Train Stink Shaggy. I want that Old Train Stink Shaggy. <laughs> no, we're going to let him win it. We're going to let him win it. Yeah. We're going to let him win it. I just really love... I if really for love some Dave reason Paul. you pick it and you really don't want it, though... My goodness. If you're last place... <laughs> it's crazy. You just end up with it. But... Let's no longer hold these these nice fine people up. Let's go ahead and I also love the Battenson. It's really good too. It is it is good. Now let's go ahead and let them see Seth's interview. And we hope you enjoy it. Seth, I really want to say thank you for doing the interview with us. And I hope you um uh I don't even know what I was gonna say with that. Doesn't matter. Have at it. Chris. To the interview. Hey, Cave Maniacs. You know, we back here in the cave chilling. This is Uncle Nasty. I got Drew Pool with me. What's going on, Cave Maniacs? We got this edition of Meet the Artist going on for you. Who are we meeting today? We are meeting the man. The man. With the plan. Absolutely. Who is that? Seth Groves. Seth Groves. Hey, how's it going? And the crowd goes wild. What's going on, Seth? <laughs> oh, not much. You know, just uh, hanging out. Pausing what? on some art so I can uh, talk to you fine folks. What what art are you working on? You working on anything you can tell us about, or is it all top secret squirrel missions? Uh, honestly, a lot of the stuff I've been working on lately is pretty top secret squirrel stuff. So um, it's 
going to be a really big year ahead. I got a lot of cool stuff going to come out. So that's fantastic, man. You know, uh, uh, you had a little bit of stuff for us come out this past year. I, yeah. I, I know. Uh, I don't know if you can see this right here, but uh, hopefully everybody can see it. Can we get a camera flip? Yeah, let's see what we got there. Can you see that, Seth? Yeah, I can see him. Tell us what. Tell us. Tell us about this. This cover you done. This is a, first of all. It's a. It's a Ferryman Origin. Ferryman Origins. It's a. Uh, a Gabe's Cave exclusive. That you done for us. Tell us a little bit what 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 made you. Because I mean, the it's a uh, sick cover. It sick. is sick. It is a sick sick cover. So uh, tell Thanks, us a little man. bit about that real quick, man. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know we get. Uh, I got to read the the first Ferryman uh, comics and, and check those out. And uh, when you guys approached me for to, you know to do an exclusive cover for you guys, I thought like I thought you know a lot probably a lot of the other artists are going to show the Ferryman as um, you know the first iteration where you know he looks kind of the Grim Grim Reaper um, on the boat and whatnot. And I wanted to try to capture kind of a different moment. I wanted to capture the moment where he picks up that torch and becomes the ferryman. And so I wanted to show him being kind of blown away and uh, being sucked back into this, um, this evil creature that kind of overtakes him and makes him become and carry this burden. And I wanted that kind of coming out of his own shadow to show the the uh, the link between the two. So um, yeah, I went through a whole whole different range of uh, things that I was I was trying to convey, and uh, having having the torch become like the main light to to show the emphasis there, and then having that torch cast the shadow that's then creating the ferryman coming uh, from behind him was uh, a lot of fun. And and then I kind of tried to. Um, you know, I put all the multiple arms reaching out to kind of grab a hold of him and uh, kind of clawing their way out of the shadow in order to uh, just, you know, kind of give that creepy vibe of like that it's attaching itself. And, uh, you know, and the ferryman being the one that like uh, charters lost souls and whatnot, I wanted to kind of give uh, a vibe of some of those extra souls and stuff within him. So, you know, on this cover here, Seth, we um you know, we pre-sold some of them, and we kept a lot of them because we figured we would uh, run across you at a con sometime, sometime in this next year, and hopefully we could do a. S- I can't hear Marty at all right now. Sorry. Oh, he was saying that we we had a we had we had kept a few of these back, so we were planning on being able to run into you at a con and getting some signatures on these, and you know, doing some artist comp stuff. Doing a doing a maybe yeah. a signing a signing with you cause. yeah for sure um, I'm I'm gonna be doing a good chunk of comic cons this year we're we're kind of figuring out uh, which ones we're gonna do I'm about to deploy here relatively soon so I'm gonna be away for a few months and then when I get back I'm gonna hit the con circuit really hard and uh, I'm gonna have a lot of a lot of new fun work um, and hopefully I've got some like really big announcements to make here in the next few months and and I'll have some new artwork at those cons. But yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to linking up. Um, the the couple times we linked up last year, and I, I got to hang out with you guys, man, with such a blast. And uh, I'm really excited to do that again this year and be able to like sign this book and stuff too. That'll be really cool. How do you how do you feel about us letting a viewer of this interview right here get these copies right here? Would that be okay with you? <laughs> yeah, that'd be fine. Sure. <laughs> so if you guys are watching this and you guys love this cover and you think Seth is just amazing, we're gonna have a separate little giveaway for this book right here. We're gonna give actually a a, a, a trade dress and a, a virgin the whole set uh, cover set. Yeah, to one of our subscribers. Just, and I think, like I said, th- you know we had we had I think five or six exclusives on this one book by uh, some of the artists that were uh part of gabe's cave uh card sets and you know i, I really like the story i like the ferryman uh but man i love your cover your cover is is like i said sick and it's hard to see it like i said the the because it's dark right here but like you you subscribed it or the arms and stuff that are coming out are like really amazing but um, let's go in, Let's go right into. I'm gonna set them over to the side right here. I know you have a lot going on, and I know your time is uh, very valuable. And we really appreciate everything that you you've 
you're done with Gabe's Cave. This is this is actually your third third series with us, correct? Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, I've been here since the beginning. So since the beginning, man, the journey's <laughs> been kind. The journey's been kind of fun. I'm just going to set them out and make sure that I got them lined up real good on the camera. While he's setting these out, tell us what these colors, man. You, I mean, you always kill stuff every time you touch anything. But what is what is up with these colors? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been having a whole lot of fun the past uh, like year or two, really exploring like some wild, crazy color colorways and stuff, um, and just just trying to uh, advance my my abilities with like color theory, and try to do that with some really really bold bright colors because. I just, I don't know, I have a fascination with, like, bright, uh, bold colors. So, um, yeah, you've seen my my art the past few years has changed quite a bit to uh, reflect that, and it's going to continue to – some of the stuff that I've done that uh, is unreleased this year uh, goes in that direction a lot, and uh, I think I'm just going to keep going in that direction. So, uh, honestly, my last set of cards was where I really started – like, that was literally where I transitioned to painting and gouache – that's right. um, and then the gouache has allowed me to um, develop these colors and uh, my uh, my exploration of these colors quite a bit. So uh, that's what you're seeing here. All these here, they're painted in gouache. Uh, I use a lot of fluorescence. And, and then I've tried to do a lot of really fun um, uh, color theory kind of implementation in them, especially like one of my favorites. Uh, of that set is the the Miles Morales with the blue. Um, I mean, that one oh, was yeah. just so much fun uh, color wise. I literally took a a color swatch basically of that because I loved how much the the colors of it came out. So I remember last year uh, watching you do uh, series two, and you had several people when you started popping the, these bright colors. All I could think about was, you know. Um, I mean, I've seen all the comments of, of all the, you know, the the bright colors. I think you did a, a Black Panther one that was really bright and everybody liked it. And a Batman one that you did that yeah. everybody really, really liked. But when we were, when we were uh, doing, you know, constructing the construction of Gabe's Cave, we were looking for neon lights, neon paints and stuff, because I wanted mm -hmm. to do some of the bathrooms and neon paints and things. And we couldn't find any. I, I just needed you to come down here and take care of that for me. But uh, anyway, we ended up doing it a little different. But let's just go into them real quick. I know I know your time is 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 valuable, and and you got a lot of things going on. Absolutely incredible, um, no doubt. I mean, let's let's start with let's start with the Batman. I yeah, mean, that is uh, that is the Robert Patterson, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's the new Batman comes out in in a, a couple of months. I'm really really excited for that film. Um, and I wanted to do something in, in kind of the, the red tones of the film. And I really wanted to try to push. Um, so that's gouache paint. And then it has a little bit of um, uh, charcoal pen or um, man, I'm trying to remember what they're called here. Um, pastel pencils. Sorry. Um, so I had some pastel pencil over the top to give a, a nice, a real smoothness to the, the transitions of his face and whatnot. So I was having a lot of fun with that and then melding the the black to just not create an eye really uh, on the other side of his face was a lot of fun to explore. But I'm super hyped for that movie. I think it's going to be really great. And Me you, too. It's hard to do a murdered out Batman without doing a bat who laughs to compliment it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Batman who laughs is, man, just one of my favorite characters uh, that DC's come up with uh, in the recent future. Or sorry, the recent... Um, the comics that they've started creating and stuff and uh, just so much fun to draw like uh, aesthetically with the, the spikes, uh, the smile, and then just, just throwing some neon red in there. Yeah. It was really fun to, to do uh, the Batman and then kind of the counterpart, the Batman who laughs. William Russell better, better get in there and do the giveaway. If he wants that card. Do you think, uh, do you think we're going to get a live action bat laughs, bat who laughs? I bet we do soon. Sorry. I, I couldn't hear you there. Sorry I said, do you, do you think we'll get a uh, a bat who laughs uh, live, live action, action film? Oh, live later? action! Oh man, 
it has to be rated R, I think, you know? Um, well, yeah, yeah. I hope, I really hope so someday. I think that would be incredible to see on screen. We, we've had enough Batman movies that it would be really neat to, we've had enough Batman and Batman and Joker movies that it would be really neat with the Flashpoint kind of stuff they're doing. They're kind of, you know, mixing dimensions and stuff. So it'd be really awesome to see a live action uh, Batman who laughs. It'd be fun to see how people think that he sees, you know what I mean? Cause he's got the yeah. thing over his eyes. So it'd be kind of wild. Well, isn't it, wouldn't it be like a bat radar? I guess. Yeah. That, that, uh, I heard the creator, uh, I think it was, I think Scott Snyder said it, or it might've been Greg Capullo said, uh, well, how do you think he sees? And they were like, well, maybe he like tastes fear or whatever. And they're like, yeah, that's it then. Whatever. Like it's, it's the creepiest way that you think that he can see. That's how he sees. Yeah, a demigod. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's a, let's move on to the next one. We got some lighter colors coming up with this uh, Ultron right here with the Infinity Stones. Yeah, yeah. I um, I, this was uh, I was doing these right as all the what if stuff was going on, and uh, I really wanted to hit some some colors with the um with the Infinity Stones and and just the idea of all the what if stuff, and then. I don't, you know, I don't know how much of the Marvel stuff you guys have seen of, as of recent, but it turns out the what if stuff was a little more important than we actually, you know, originally thought. Right. So, um, you know, maybe we're going to see this live action sometime, and they'll bring Ultron back with the uh, with the with the stones, or you know, yeah, but, Ultron. Uh, very intriguing. Fast. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, they they a really intriguing villain got rid of him in one movie. I'd like to see him come back. That'd be cool. You, got, you, you told us about the the Miles, the, Miles, the Spider Man with that blue. Uh, tell us about this Dune card right here. The Paul, the, oh Paul, the Mister Protagonist. <laughs> yeah, that was that's probably my favorite movie of the of last year. Um, it was good. I I freaking loved it. I thought it was so amazing. Uh, Dennis Villanueva, or however you say his last name, I always mess it up, but. Um, with Blade Runner 2049 and now Dune, like visually, he's one of my favorite directors. And, uh, I love that film. Uh, I can't wait for the second part, but yeah, I had to do, I had to do a Paul card. Cause that was, I think I did that a couple days after I saw the film. So, um, super excited it, it for that is. part two and doing him in some like fun colors. I really wanted to do a portrait and that was, that was a blast. Yeah. His hair. That's though. what I was going to say. Yeah. Bro. His hair, it, his hair is everything. It's amazing. You, you guys, I feel, I feel bad for you guys. Even though you guys are the ones who get to win these things, Cable Maniacs, I feel bad for y'all because y'all, y'all can't tell until you get these cards in your hand just how phenomenal some of these colors are. Uh, it's just a great job, Seth. Someone's gonna have to fight me for the Moadib. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's, let's talk about these nightmare before Christmas cards, right? Jack, here. Oogie Boogie and Santa. It, it looks yeah, like, so, it looks like you, you intended on these to be a kind of like a collector's thing. You, you guys that win these might have to get with the other viewers and try to finagle your way <laughs> into getting all three cards. My, my wife's yeah, going to make um, up three accounts. <laughs> oh, sorry, I cut <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, he's saying Misty was going to have to make three different ghost accounts trying to win these. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of, um, I knew, you know, I know how much Misty loves uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, so I kind of did these for her. I, I thought she might, she might steal them out of the, uh, out of the picks and stuff, um, which is totally fine with me. But um, yeah, I made them to all kind of connect. Um, I just wanted kind of a Halloween themed uh, deal, and I've ne I've never illustrated those characters, and uh, I, I watched this like mm -hmm. five or six times this year, and I was like, I really want to draw and, and paint these. And uh, doing Oogie Boogie with, I wanted to explore like the textures of that kind of burlap sack look and stuff. And then uh, I wanted to do, I wanted to do it, but like with bright colors, which isn't typically something that's done with uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. So um, I had a lot of fun with, with doing the oranges and whatnot and keeping that kind of Halloween theme. Okay, now we're coming up on my personal favorite out of these as as much as i do like all the rest of them this dark side is touching my soul right now yeah. thanks i i really really enjoyed doing this one too because the the textures of his skin are were so much fun this is actually one of the fastest cards i painted with him and it looks like it's like one of the most detailed ones but 
just laying down that texture came i mean it was it was just so much fun to do and it and it like it all like landed um i i barely had to make make adjustments to this card it just like came together like perfectly um so that was a that was a really really fun card to do and i hope to gosh i oh man i hope so bad that we get to see dark side in the future um with some sort of justice league thing that'd be awesome especially yeah. that design of dark side so cool now is shaggy. is this shaggy ball z <laughs> so when i was oh, down God. when i was with you guys for spock on last year darren uh <laughs> made a joke darren and gabe both made a joke that they wanted to see uh ultra instinct shaggy on my car and <laughs> so yeah i uh i had to make that happen and that was that was seriously fun to paint too i i didn't think doing um like a cartoon kind of feel um would be as much fun as it was but that was actually really fun yeah man so now you guys y'all heard the backstory on pretty much the hows and the whys of all these cards um i was gonna ask early on i don't mean to cut you off i was gonna ask i was looking at these cards i'm thinking where's this signature splatter you know signature you know you always do a little signature splatter on your cards yeah i see it i see it on paul yeah yeah Yeah. he's got it yeah i kind (laughs) of i strayed away from it a little bit uh during these ones i'm I'm not sure why i don't know just uh yeah the these are definitely some of the top series three i think they're 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 amazing which you know i've always said it seth from the first time that we met you years ago you know, I love your work. I've always said you're just uh, so talented. And, uh, man, look, looking forward to seeing how your future grows. I know um, you've got a bright future in the industry. And, and, man, just thank you for just being part of the journey. Yeah, thank you're- you guys so much for the opportunities you've put in front of me to do the, the cover for Ferryman. was really awesome uh, to do all these card sets. has been great. Um just knowing and being incorporated with you guys, watching your guys' growth has been really awesome too. And uh, yeah, we got some really cool things um, ahead of us for 2022. So uh, I'm excited to show you guys some of the art I've been creating. It is um, by far my best work is going to come out this year. So uh, really excited to to show you guys some of my stuff. Yeah, man. Well, you know, we it don't hurt our feelings to hear about the top secret missions because we know when we finally get to see it, it's going to be top notch. Man, we don't want to hold you up no longer. Seth, I think this was a good interview. Yeah, if you want, are you doing any commissions, Seth? Uh, right now, um, all my commissions are booked up. Uh, I'm getting ready to get to the point where I'm about to clear them out, and uh, I might be accepting some here in the next like month or two. But uh, gonna, as of right now, I'm not taking anything. Yeah, we're gonna put your social media right here on on here so somebody can actually i don't know where it's at but it's going to be right here somewhere uh we're going to make sure your social media is on there so people knows how to know how to get a hold of you and and we appreciate your time and and good luck and thank you for your um your service i know you said you're fixing to be just yeah man stay careful again stay careful there okay yeah we'll do thank you guys appreciate it appreciate you you. all right brother thank you man Seth's bringing in some heat this time, this go around, and we are giving away all 10 of these bad boys right here, right now. Uh, we're not right now. Next week, you know how it works. We're, bringing, we're giving away all these bad boys. We'll announce them next week on next week's video. If you want to enter to win and you don't know you're new here, make sure that you click the first link in the description. That is the gabescave.com forward slash giveaways link. It's super simple. All you got to do is just fill it out. Make sure you fill it out right, because if you fill it out wrong and we can't get a hold of you, you're not getting your card. Um, <clears throat> anyways, um, make sure you fill it out, click that link, tell your friends about it. And all you got to do is make sure you're, you like the video and you're subscribed to the channel. Super simple. We just give stuff away all the time. And the last place will always win that loot box, which may or may not contain a art card from series two from last year. You never know. I'm just saying. I guess you can have the ultra instinct shaggy. So with that being said, some final notes about today's video. Number one, I really love my Darth Maul's Mythos. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Dad, who gave that to me, or Marty, or Droolpool, what if you're an OG here, for giving me that for Christmas. Not to Gabe, because Gabe had no part of that. 
That's right. Um, yeah, no thanks to Gabe. Yeah. 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 That's what you get. Stop wearing hoodies. Make me. Um, <laughs> and we hope you enjoy Seth's video and my really cool lightsaber my wife got me for Christmas. This is also showing this off. Check this bad boy out. We're just showing off Darren's Christmas. You see that? Listen to this. That is not a sound effect. Oh, they distracted. I stole the card. I like it so much because we told Seth about it also. Well, we did. We were actually yeah. eating pizza with Seth one night in Hot Springs. <laughs> and Gabe goes, Seth, man, you should do an Ultra Instinct Shaggy. And Seth was like, I am going to do that. He, he didn't Gabe know what it upset. is. He didn't know what it is because I had to, I'd, I'd showed him videos of it and memes of it. And then and now Gabe is upset that he can't have it. Yeah. So there you have it. I might get one from <clears> Seth <throat> at some point or somebody. I don't know. Well, let's, uh, uh, let's go ahead and thank the sponsor one more time. Thank you, RPG. RPGHiring.com, thank you for always supporting us, letting us do our tomboolery here that we do all the time. Gabe, do you have any final thoughts on the show? No. You never do. You never do. Do you like it? Can you see it back here? Am I in the way? Here it is, right here. My very first statue of the cave. <laughs> but not, I have a shelf full of crap, but... <laughs> my very first statue and make sure your that shelf. you're I know you've got stuff on my shelf <laughs> make sure that you stay tuned for our next upcoming episodes because we've got some cool stuff I have something else I got for Christmas that I'm going to build and I assure you it's not a statue you, you know what I mean built, <laughs> you never built my Legos <laughs> yeah I know you just told her what it was Gabe jeez Anyways, what else do we build Legos alright ultimate collector series Star Wars stuff but you'll have to wait to see which one it is. It's something newer. You'll have to wait to see what my Legos is probably another year. Well, that's like you got to build them, not me. I know. Anyways. i got to have time. Gabe, okay, send us home, buddy. No. <laughs> got him in the jugular. Bye.